The man accused of mailing homemade bombs to prominent Democrats and critics of President Trump appeared in court Monday. Caesar Sayoc is facing at least five federal charges. If convicted, he could get up to 48 years in prison. CBS News correspondent Manuel Bohorkas reports from Miami. In court, a handcuffed Caesar Sayak was soft-spoken and even appeared to become emotional at times. A stark contrast to the man accused of a campaign of fear that continued even today. This time with a suspicious package intercepted in Atlanta addressed to CNN headquarters. It would be at least the 15th potentially explosive device Sayok is accused of mailing to prominent critics of President Trump. CBS News has learned the suspect had a list of more than 100 others, mostly politicians and media figures. Investigators say Sayok's van, covered in pro-Trump stickers, was his home and bomb lab. Authorities say none of the devices had a trigger mechanism, and Sayok said he never intended to harm anyone. Sayok is an ardent supporter of the president. Filmmaker Michael Moore released this footage of him at a rally in Florida last year. Deborah Garagian manages a pizza restaurant where Sayok once worked. In your view, his these weren't just political views. It it went beyond that. It went it went to pure hatred. Yes. Your hatred. Surveillance video obtained by a Miami station shows Sayok reading newspapers at a strip club just hours before he was arrested Friday. Daniel Aronson represents Sayok. We don't know what they have yet. That's up for them to, to, to prove. And Manuel Bohorkas joins us now from Miami. Uh, Manny, you mentioned this list uh, found in Sayok's van of other potential uh, targets. What more do we know about that? Well, at this point, CBS News can confirm that investigators say they found a list of about 100, if not more, uh, people uh, that they believe uh, could have been possible targets of Caesar Sayok, the man that they are accusing of all of this. Uh, on that list, uh, more politicians, of course, left-leaning politicians and even uh, members of the media. Uh, that list was found in the van, according to the information uh, that CBS News learned today. Uh, so right now, the Joint Terror Task Force is trying to notify uh, everyone whose names were on that list. Again, no injuries at this point. None of the devices uh, have gone off um, from what we can tell or from what authorities are telling us, including the one that was found today in Atlanta and intercepted before it reached uh, CNN headquarters. But clearly this case, as you've witnessed just the last few days, keeps growing and growing as far as um, the potential for other devices being out there and people who may have been targets. Uh, whoever was responsible here, authorities, of course, saying that they've got their man, Caesar Sayok. Uh, you mentioned Sayok became emotional in court today. Uh, did he seem to be reacting to something specific? Take us, take us into the courtroom a little bit. Yeah, really, standing room only in there, so it was kind of uh, hard to see, but it was clear uh, that he would turn one direction. It was to his left, and then you could see his eyes well up with tears, and he clearly became emotional. We, we tried our best to find out who he was looking at and asked his attorneys who were seated in that section, but they refused to tell us uh, who it was, whether it was a relative or a friend, but clearly somebody uh, who uh, got a reaction out of him, an emotional reaction there. Uh, but that's really all we saw from him in court other than stepping up to to the uh, to the in front of the judge, uh, handcuffed, uh, very soft spoken. Uh, only said yes when when he uh, needed to tell the judge he understood what was going on. Other than that, a very subdued uh, Sayok in court today. Uh, and we heard his lawyer say, "Okay, now it's on prosecutors to to prove this case." Are investigators saying anything about how they think uh, Sayok acquired the materials to build? these bombs and is it legally uh, relevant that they themselves say there were no trigger mechanisms in any of these packages? Well, according to the FBI, we heard it at the news conference on Friday after the arrest, they said these were not hoaxes. It seems at this point that the FBI and prosecutors are still going with the fact that these were meant to be explosives, even though CBS News has learned that uh, Sayok initially told investigators he did not mean to hurt anyone, and that's why those devices did not contain a trigger. Uh, it will be up to the interpretation of the law and what prosecutors can prove here, how that plays out going forward. Investigators have not revealed where they believe he got some of the items that were used to build these things. All they've said is that they believe some of them were constructed in that van, which he happened to be living in uh, at the time they believe he was putting these together. Uh, and lastly, what next for the investigation? 
So there is a hearing on Friday that is supposed to determine whether he is eligible for bail. His defense attorneys will argue to the judge that he should be uh, allowed to be freed on bail because in their view he is innocent until proven guilty. But prosecutors clearly with more packages showing up will argue uh, that he in their view is still a threat to the public and should remain in custody until the trial happens. That trial is expected to be in New York. But as you know, with this uh, judicial proceedings, the way they work out, there are a lot of hoops to jump through, including the bail hearing and then uh, whether he will be moved from Florida to New York. He could very easily say that he agrees to go along with that and his attorneys do, or they could say that they want this, the prosecutors to prove that the case should move up there and that could delay things where he may spend more time in custody here in Miami. Okay, Manuel Bohorkas, Manny, thanks so much.